us in prayer and invite the sweet presence of the holy God of heaven into the house of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence today with thankful hearts. Lord, you've been so good. And we just praise your holy and awesome name. Lord, we invite you right now to come into this house and move freely among us. May every barrier be moved out of the way. And we pray, Lord, that you would, you would just speak to us today and may we hear your voice. Lord, show us the way. Would you shine your light on our path? We need help today, Lord. Father, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory for you are good. And we just love you today and thank you so much for all that you do and for who you are. Lord, right now we're ready to worship your holy and righteous name. Just pray, Lord, you just pour the joy of the Lord into our soul right now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Could we give the Lord a praise offering today as we begin Sunday morning service? Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise, and give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart, your voice is raised, your voice is raised. All glory and honor and power unto presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart your voice is raised your voice is raised all glory and Thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Your voice is raised, your voice is raised. All glory and honor.
promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I now can say. of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of the Lord, bound to Him eternally. Spirit, sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. On the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roll at the sound of your name. I sing for joy. Compares to the promise. 
give the Lord the praise that we, we can stand on the promises of God. Amen. I'm telling you this morning, God is real. I said God is real. Amen. And he's here this morning. Praise God. You know, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And we just, when we cry out to him, when we come to him, when we humble ourselves and seek his face, turn from our wicked ways, when we come before him in faith believing, there's just no limit to what God can do. No limit to what God can do. Amen. He will make a way, even where there seems to be no way. We've got some prayer needs this morning, and I've asked uh, Ed to come forward and stand in the prayer line for Carol, for his sister, who's uh, going to be having her surgery to uh, close up the wound that was created several months ago now when she had that double mastectomy, that wound is never closed. And they're going to do a, I guess it's a double surgery. So, uh, Ed, if you want to come and stand in for your sister. And uh, I need someone to, one of the ladies to come up and stand in for uh, Mary. Yeah, come on ahead, Donna. Uh, Mary class started uh, a dialysis just this last week. It's something that we didn't want to see happen, but I believe that God has Mary in, her, in his hands. And he's a God of might and miracles. And there's nothing too hard for God. She's not able to be here today, but I believe she's with us in spirit right now, praying and believing God for healing in her body. And uh, also, uh, Jackie uh, c called in this morning, and she's not feeling well today. One of the ladies might come up and, Cricket, maybe could you come up and stand in for Jackie? Because we want to have a point of contact where we can pray for those who are struggling with health issues or other problems or complications of life. How many knows that in life, they're just one complication after another. Life is difficult. Life is hard. But God is good. Amen. Amen. We don't face those trials and struggles alone. We can turn to God and cry out to Him. And God is real. He does hear and answer prayer. And He gives us the gift of faith. And we put our trust in the Lord. We don't understand many times what's happening in our lives, but God does. And he, he goes ahead of us to open up the doors and to make a way. Amen. 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 If you'd like to come up and, and uh, be prayed for today, or if you'd like to come up and pray with those that are here at the altar this morning, as we begin to pray, just come on down to the altar. And if you guys want to step forward a little more and make room for others, we're just going to show solidarity of faith today and stand firm on the promises of God. We are going to shout to the Lord and take a hold of that promise by faith that God gives us in his word. He's our great physician. He's our healer. I believe in divine intervention. I believe in miracles. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen.
David and Kim's son, Aaron, had uh, a surgery, and he's going through a time of real uh, serious uh, affliction with uh, Lou Gehrig's disease down in uh, Alabama. And um, also there was somebody else. Oh, uh, Jess Terrell is homesick today as well. Could we just agree together in prayer for the, the Lord to... Uh, we, we know that he is omnipresent. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you will manifest your presence and reaffirm your promises. Wherever there's a need, wherever there's a hungry heart, wherever there's a desire, Lord, to see the mighty works of God done. Lord, we're just trusting you and leaning on you and waiting on you. You are our hope. We thank you, Lord, for what man can do, for what medicine can do, for what doctors can do. But, Lord, we thank you most of all for what you do because you give all of these gifts to mankind. And, Lord, we, we just receive all of this as a blessing from heaven. And we, we want to give you the praise and the glory for everything that we receive in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hey, before you're seated, could you just uh, greet four or five people and maybe six if you get real ambitious and make sure that you. Uh, uh, I had, had the pleasure of meeting Dyson and Sarah over there this morning. Wave, wave your hands at it, would you folks? God bless you. First time in service. 
here at Jasonville. We are so glad that you're here. Amen. And that's, uh, that's Michael right there as well. I think he's six because he had a birthday in October that I forgot. Amen. Praise God. spring quarter for the adult school of the Bible. And uh, here at Jasonville Assembly of God, we, we just have real strong convictions about the importance of, of uh, coming together in small groups to study the Word of God and to share fellowship. And here's what's on the menu for next quarter. Both of the, there'll be two adult classes. Both of them will be held at 930 on Sunday morning in the church basement. We've got two large rooms down there. And um, we're going to continue the class on great Christians. And this morning we, we studied the life of Francis Asbury, who was instrumental in the Methodist movement back in the 18th century, and how he gave himself unselfishly, sacrificially, to the work of God. And Raised, he was a part of a great movement back in, uh, in that generation, in that time. So every Sunday we'll, we'll, we'll choose uh, a, uh, a great Christian, whether it's a, a guy or a girl. Bob McBride's going to teach this quarter, and uh, that, that's, that's going to be a great option there for School of the Bible. The other class that will start next Sunday will be led by Paula Jones, and we all know what Paula's been through. Uh, you haven't had any stress in your life the last few years, have you, Paula? Just a little. She's gone through so much physically, health-wise, but God has blessed her abundantly and giving her such a powerful, awesome, you might say miraculous recovery where she's able to, to do something like being the teacher of, of the school of the Bible. And... Uh, the book that they're going to study is a Joyce Meyer book. It's called Overload. It's on dealing with stress. And uh, I don't know if there'd be anybody else here that would ever have to deal with stress or not. But just in case, you might want to keep that in mind. It might come in handy because there's some powerful principles there that would be handy to have a grip on. Amen. Amen.
that. How many excited about Easter? It's only, I believe it's uh, six weeks from today. You might want to double check that. Uh, I just said that off the top of my head, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's six weeks. It might be five. Um, it's going to be in April sometime. Anybody know the date on that? Is it the 19th? Oh, it's Easter's the 9th of April? It's probably about six weeks away. And, uh, you know, I've just felt here recently that uh, it's something that we ought to do a better job preparing ourselves for. So I'm going to be bringing a message this morning on preparing for Easter because I, I believe that it, uh, it's, it's more than just the observance or the celebration of a holiday. No, it is. There's a dynamic to Easter because it's not about, and it's not just about uh, believing that Jesus rose from the dead. It's about experiencing the life of Christ in you. And so this is something that we need to again and again and again, from day to day, and from week to week. And may we not waver in that relationship that we have with the living Christ. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. And we thank you for all the open ears and open hearts that are here today and that are listening outside the walls of the building as well. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. amen, amen. God bless you. Praise God. How many heard about Mardi Gras last week? Anybody pay attention to that? We didn't, I don't think we had a Mardi Gras parade here in Jasonville, did we? If we did, I missed it. Okay, I don't think there was one. But, you know, if you'd gone down to New Orleans... I read a report that said there was about estimated 1.4 million people attended that festival this year. That's a big deal. And there are other cities and population centers, not only in America, but across the world. Orlando, Florida, several large cities in Louisiana. Um, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, there was a big Mardi Gras. Um, London and uh, places in France, Paris and in, in, uh, Spain, and, uh, various countries all across the world. Um, there, there is this phenomena of, of this uh, annual uh, celebration and I've been doing some study on, on Mardi Gras. I've never attended uh, Mardi Gras. I don't have any desire to attend it. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, what it is, and uh, how it got to be what it is, and what it's all about. And I've come to a simple conclusion in the research and study I've done on it that uh, here's what it is. It's a big party. It's just a big party. But the fact is, at the beginning, and this, this goes all the way back to the first century. I'm going to explain that just a little bit. Started out as a religious observance. It had a religious or a Christian purpose. But over the years, 
it's kind of degenerated into an opportunity for people to, to be crazy and to dress up in weird costumes and uh, have fun, have a lot to drink and, and go to parties and, and uh, outrageous uh, behavior. Um, some of these uh, places in these big cities are even dangerous to go to because people are under the influence and, and uh, it's really not, not safe. Although other parts, um, you know, you don't see that necessarily on the surface, but headed toward the, the promised land. Because, but it's just human nature to take something, to begin with something that God does, and then through uh, human philosophy and secularized thinking to, for that, that thing to degenerate into something that's, that's not very pleasing to God, if you follow my, my line of thinking here. So, uh, but the matter of fact, as far as Mardi, Mardi Gras, for all of its extravagance and debauchery, its roots go back to Christianity. Uh, back in the first century, there's evidence, there's historical evidence that as the church grew in the very beginning, that East.
risk. He was taking a stand and, and saying, uh, uh, my For Easter. Here's, here's what Hosea 10 12 says. It says, Break up your fallow ground. It's time to seek the Lord. We were talking in School of the Bible this morning about the Asbury revival down there in Kentucky and how there's a lot of repentance going on. There, people are getting up and confessing their sins and they're renouncing their sins and they're, they're publicly declaring, I want to change my ways. I am going to live for God. I am going to do the things that are pleasing to God. I'm going to put my own will out of the way, and I'm going to make God's will and God's way the number one thing in my life. How do you prepare for Easter? And between now and Easter, I'm not exactly sure what the Lord is going to had me say, but I think it's going to be about, uh, about the living Christ. I think it's going to be about preparing yourself to have a more dynamic, a more deep encounter with God through Christ, through, by the power of the Holy Spirit in your life.
satisfy your mind by studying the evidence. I think that's a good thing to do in preparation for Easter. Who is Jesus? You need to know for yourself, not just because the pre preacher says so, but because you see what the Bible says, and then you reason in your mind using all the evidence that's available, and you make, you come to that place where you're convinced. Because he forgives our sins, that touches our hearts. We know that even though we are undeserving of his mercy and his grace, Hundred and twenty that went to the upper room and they stayed there for ten days. And they were for them it was a time of preparation. Jesus had commanded them to, to go out into the world and share the message, but they weren't ready. And so they, they waited for ten days until they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. What a day that was. Tongues of fire sat upon each one of them. There was a sound of a rushing mighty wind. God came into the room. God came into their lives. God came into their bodies. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit, the person, it was the spirit of Jesus Christ. They came in and began to possess them so that they were, they were new. They were, they were different.
that burns with holy fear. Oh, Lord, your beauty. all I see when your eyes are on this child your grace abounds in me oh Lord please light the fire that once burned bright and clear replace the lamp of my first love burns with hope. Oh Lord, Lord, replace the lamp give me fresh fire change my heart, oh God if anybody else wants to come and spend some time praying around the altars, altars are open. I do want to remind the children's worker, children's and youth workers, there's just going to be a short meeting after the prayer time, if you're able to stay for that. But if you just feel like you want to pray before you leave and 